very good evening students this is the third video on ossification and here you will see that in the last two videos we have seen the process of the ossification what are the parts of the bone which develops from primary center of ossification that was the diaphysis which develops from primary and both the ends they develop from the secondary centers of ossification we saw that the primary center appears before birth in cartilaginous model and then the secondary centers they appears at varying period say for example if it is a model of the humerus then the upper end appears at the first year of age and the lower end or secondary center appears at the end of the second year of the age of a child okay and then they form the different uh, uh, centers of ossification by the process of which the bone keeps on growing in the length as well as in the diameter and this process uh, okay is there for the next few years that means by the time the a child approaches the age of 16 to 20 years of age okay this ossification keeps on going and then after some time it stops okay it's it stop so let us see what are the parts of a developing bone in a child when it is the growing it is a growing bone what are its part okay after birth after say for example somewhere between third and the 16 years of age okay 16 years of age let us see the parts okay the parts at the ends we have seen that this part of the spongy bone which is has formed by the secondary center is called as epiphysis please note down in your notebooks the ends which is uh, formed by the secondary center for upper end as well as for lower end this is spongy in nature and this part of the bone is called as epiphysis which is covered by a thin layer of the hyaline cartilage which is known as the articular cartilage okay then the central part of the bone of a developing bone okay is known as the diaphysis and this diaphysis has developed from the primary center of ossification as early as the 8th week of intrauterine life before birth okay and it has formed the main part of the uh, sac which is still growing which is for example at the age of 3 or 4 years the length of the humerus is less much less as compared to the length of the humerus at the age of 16 17 or 18 years of age so the length keeps on growing okay so this central part which appears uh, due to or formed due to the primary center is called as diaphysis and in this diaphysis we have seen that the the this compact part of the bone okay which is deep to the periosteum this fibrous membrane was formed by the periosteum itself this membrane periosteum compact bone periosteal collar to which we have said in the beginning and then the central part was formed by the primary center of ossification which gave rise to the spongy bone but then this spongy bone was destroyed and a cylindrical cavity was formed which is called as the marrow cavity the marrow cavity now then between the bone of the diaphysis and the epiphysis there is a cartilaginous plate is still remaining and growing very fast at both the ends and this cartilaginous plate is called as epiphyseal plate again and again i am telling that don't confuse with epiphysis which is a bone from that epiphyseal plate which is a plate of the hyaline cartilage at both the ends and then the part of this epiphyseal plate cartilaginous plate which is adjacent to diaphysis is the active site for the bone formation where the cartilage is replaced by the bone that is called as metaphysis okay it is called as metaphysis so let us once again i will tell you and you speak with me what are the parts of a developing bone in a child both the ends they are called as epiphysis upper epiphysis and the lower epiphysis then comes the two cartilaginous plate 
which is a growing cartilage and this is called as epiphyseal plate upper epiphyseal plate and the lower epiphyseal plate then comes the body or the shaft which is called as the diaphysis which is made up of the compact bone covered by the membrane called as the periosteum and contains a cavity called as the marrow cavity filled with the bone marrow in the living condition and the part of the bone which is the active site for the formation of the bone is okay which is close to the diaphyseal side of the epiphyseal plate is called as the metaphysis so some part of the diaphysis and some part of the epiphyseal plate okay adjacent part this is called as meta so there is an upper metaphysis and then there is a lower metaphysis so if you get a short note to write what are the parts of developing bone draw a diagram like this label it and describe it in the, the heads epiphysis metaphysis and diaphysis and epiphyseal plate periosteum bone marrow okay and bone marrow i hope that you have followed the parts of the developing bone in a child now let us see this part okay which is called as the metaphysis and metaphysis is a active site of the bone formation at upper end and lower end by which the length of a bone increases okay at both the ends okay at both the ends this is that epiphyseal cartilage now the diaphyseal side of the epiphyseal cartilage shows the active site of bone formation it means that <coughs> just a minute <coughs> excuse me <coughs> it means that here the cartilage is being replaced by the bone okay so this metaphysis is the active site of the bone formation by replacing the cartilage here so the growth of the bone thus takes place in length at both the proximal and the distal plate okay epiphyseal plate and this area is called as the metaphysis okay <coughs> now the second question is which is asked is how a developing bone increases in length and diameter which i have already covered the length of a bone uh, in a child increases at both the ends upper end as well as lower end and this is because if you see the epiphyseal plate here is the continuous formation of the hyaline cartilage chondrocytes are dividing very rapidly and sec secreting the intercellular matrix that is the ground substance and the collagen fiber thus the on this side new cartilage is added towards the epiphysis side new cartilage is added okay but on the other end of the epiphyseal plate this cartilage is gradually replaced by the bone so the speed of formation of cartilage on epiphyseal side in upper epiphysis and near the lower epiphysis is same by which the new bone is forming forming so the formation of the cartilage and its replacement by the new bone formation is been balanced so the growth in the upper end as well as the growth in lower end takes place and because of that the length of a bone increases but then how the circumference of the bone increases the circumference of the bone increases as we have seen by the formation of the compact bone just deep to the periosteum and this periosteum is a membrane and the osteoblast cell on the under surface of periosteum they keep on forming the new bone in the circumference okay so the diameter of the bone increases but at the same time the bone from the marrow cavity or endosteal side of this it also reabsorbed so the thickness of the marrow cavity though increase but at the same time okay the thickness of the compact bone is increase in balance and this keeps on going till a particular age after which the size of the circumference or diameter of bone and the diameter or um, it's the cavity it is stabilized okay it, this is the way how the length increases by the growth of the epiphyseal cartilage or plate and by the diameter increases by the bone formation deep to the periosteum which is a membranous osteum. 
ossification. Okay, I don't want to go in detail, but the diameter increases by membranous ossification because periosteum is a membrane, while the length increases because of the growth of the cartilage, and this cartilage is replaced by the bone that is it is an example of the endochondral ossification okay it is an example now the third question which is asked here is how long a developing bone will grow after the birth for that i have already drawn a diagram see here this diagram okay this will happen till the age of 16 or 20 years depending on the bone which you are studying or depending on the sex in male, it closes later as compared to female where it closes earlier or the growth stops earlier. And then it also varies from population to population, race to race and also being affected by the climatic condition as well as the nutritional state, state of that of the individual. Okay. But this stops for humerus, say for example, by in any case it will stop by the age of 20 years there will be no further growth in the length of the uh, humerus okay and this is achieved by when the uh, age starts approaching uh, for the stoppage of the growth then this cells in the cartilage okay epiphyseal plate it doesn't grow further and whatsoever epiphyseal cartilage is remaining here is completely replaced by the bone by from the metaphyseal side. So metaphysis converts the, I mean say replace this cartilage whatsoever remaining is there uh, by the bone. So that ultimately the bone from the metaphyseal side okay unites with the bone of the epiphysis which develops from secondary center this is spongy bone and then the this bone from the metaphysis they come and they fuse with each other they fuse that means now there is no epiphyseal plate because it has been completely replaced by the age of 20 years in the humerus. So after the fusion of epiphysis and say for example diaphysis, there is no further growth in the length of the bone. And this union between epiphysis and the diaphysis at metaphysis is indicated by a zigzag line. If you will cut a section of a long bone, you will get this zigzag line and this line indicates the site of fusion between the epiphysis bone and that is the diaphyseal bone and this line is called as epiphyseal line. After this hmm, there will be no further growth in the length of the bone. This completes the third video on the ossification. In the next video I will cover some of the other aspect of the bone formation. Thank you very much for watching this video.